Today we're speaking with Dr. William Dalton. He is chair of the AACR's Science Policy and Legislative Affairs Committee and director of the H. Lee Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. Thank you for joining us. Happy to do so. You've been a champion for and pioneer of personalized medicine, especially in your efforts at the Moffitt Cancer Center. What does personalized medicine mean for the future of cancer research? Personalized medicine actually means a lot of things to different people depending on their perspective. To most, it means using molecular technology to define, if you will, the molecular nuance of each individual and their tumor so that you can personalize therapy based on the molecular uniqueness of an individual. And it's basically giving the right treatment to the right patient. But I think personalized medicine is much more than that. It's more than just molecular technology. In my mind, it's a very holistic approach to a patient and their family. So patients have unique needs, and personalized medicine, in my mind, is an approach to first identify those needs of the patient and their family, and then develop an approach to meet those needs. That, to me, is personalized medicine, because there are different aspects of care. Because really, we're not treating cancer, we're treating patients with cancer. And in order to do that, you have to understand all their needs, their psychosocial needs, uh, economic needs, those two need to be met if you're really going to treat the patient. You were instrumental in the development of Moffitt's Total Cancer Care Program. What does this program do for Moffitt patients and how can other cancer centers implement a similar approach? Well, about eight years ago we created a program at Moffitt called Total Cancer Care and this was our approach to personalized cancer care. And we put the patients and their families in the center. Uh, that's sort of our home base. Again, it's an approach to try to identify the needs, all the needs, of a patient and their families and then identify an approach to the, meet those needs. So Total Cancer Care is actually a partnership. It's a partnership with a patient and we ask them three things. One, can we follow you throughout your lifetime so that we can learn from you? Two, can we study your tumor? Can we study the uniqueness of your uh, using these, this molecular technology? And three, if we, can find, if we find anything that might be of benefit to you, can we recontact you? And so it's following patients throughout their lifetime. Dealing with cancer is a journey. It's not just the time that it's being diagnosed or treated. It's the entire uh, journey of a patient, of an individual and their families. So uh, we ask permission to follow them so we can learn from every patient. Ultimately, we want to empower the patient. We want to do that by obviously treating them with the best therapies, but we also want to empower them with information so that they too can participate in the decision making. And we do that. So we give patients back their own information uh, of what we've learned and make comparisons between them and others so that, again, they're empowered to make decisions. The AACR will soon release a report on the future of cancer research with personalized medicine as the report's primary focus. Barriers to advancing personalized medicine will be included in this report. In your mind, what are some of those key barriers and what can be done to eliminate them? Well, these are very exciting times. I mean, we're uh, at the threshold of truly delivering personalized medicine through science. Uh, science has created the technology and made discoveries that allow us now to address molecular techniques and using those techniques to define again, if you will, the uniqueness of a patient. But uh, it's more than that. Uh, there are different types of information we need. We need to understand in all the clinical aspects as well as the molecular aspects, and then we have to marry them. We have to basically create relationships. To do that, you have to have much uh, information from all kinds of aspects. And so um, there are two main barriers, I think, to delivering personalized medicine for patients. The first is technological. We don't have the information systems. We don't have the applications we need to truly uh, allow and empower uh, patients as well as uh, researchers and doctors. Uh, this will require following literally millions and millions of patients in real time to ultimately develop a, what we call a rapid learning information system so that you can ask questions, you can query uh, this information system and get, again, information that will aid in decision making. Uh, and discovery. So the, the technology of information systems needs to advance. So uh, the other barrier, if you will, is more in policy. There are uh, understandably rules uh, in how you use this information, but sometimes in, with good intent, such as HIPAA, uh, we can actually create more barriers that impede our progress 
in helping patients and empowering them with their own information. So that would probably be the second type of barrier we're talking about. Science policy is an increasingly important part of what the American Association for Cancer Research does, and you chair the group that leads these efforts for the association. Why is it so important for cancer researchers to be advocates for the field? Well, I think cancer researchers uh, need to be advocates because I, th I think sometimes we think it's intuitive uh, that the value of what we're doing should be obvious to everybody. Obviously to us it is. But uh, it's not to everyone. Um, sometimes the standard of care in the minds of society is quite adequate and actually impressive. But it's not near what it needs to be. And that's what drives scientists. That's what drives cancer researchers, to improve. We all are doing it for the reason to improve the lives of our patients and, and society as a whole. But that takes education. Education uh, of policymakers, education of patients themselves, ed education of society as a whole frankly, education of the researchers of the future as well, who need to be advocates as much as those that are currently doing it. So I think it's in, uh, we can't assume, again, that this is intuitive or that this is intrinsic. We have to explain why it's so important for individuals uh, and society. Dr. Dalton, thank you so much. Happy to do it.